morning. Good morning. I put the pumpkins up because tomorrow's Halloween. So that means today it's Friday, October 30th. Man, time is going by so fast. You can see I still haven't sewn my basket quilt together and that's because I'm working on our next class, which is faces. And I'm getting really excited about it to the point of when I started working on it and you know taking pictures for a PowerPoint to present and all of that, I got really lost in the moment. It was fabulous, super fabulous. And I have something very exciting, excuse me, to share at the end of today's presentation. Really super excited. So today might go a little bit long. I'm gonna try uh, not to drone on too much <laughs> on just stuff, but you guys have been sending in pictures of the basket quilts and I've even gotten some cave ones that are just spectacular. I just, I wish we were all in a big room together because I'm telling you, we've got some serious stuff going on with you guys. But first, what I would like to do is, I ha got a, a comment from somebody and I have a question from somebody. And this is from Nancy. We were talking about batting on Wednesday and I said, I have not yet worked with a bamboo. And what this is what she said. She said, it's soft, it needles well, it breathes. To me, it almost kind of sounds like it's kind of like a wool. But she said, you know, it's a little bit more expensive. And she actually stated warm and natural, but you know, across the board, it's probably a little bit more expensive, like wool. And she said, but it's absolutely worth it. So Nancy, thanks for throwing in your 10 cents on this. I really appreciate it. And then, you know, on Sunday, we're doing the TQS Block of the Month 2021 reveal. Kristen has been sending you emails and they are quite the tease. And uh, one of the things that was said was that they're made from shot cottons, or most of it. I think there might be one or two fabrics in it that are not shot cottons. But uh, then um, Ginger asked, well, what is a shot cotton? Good question. A shot cotton is you've got, you've got the warp, the threads, and you have the weft when fabric is being woven. And typically it will all be the same color, right? But with a shot cotton, the warp is one color, the weft is another color. Let me show you a picture here, right here. So you can see that this is Wyndham's. Oh, maybe I've just given you another little clue. This is Wyndham's and you can see that there's like white in there and then the color. So these are shot cottons. That's what they look like. They just bring something else to the, to the table, so to speak. So uh, here we sell um, these oak shot cot, uh, wet, um, <laughs> oak shot. <laughs> And let me show you what makes them so special. So here you can see one of the threads is green. This is either the warp or the wet. What is it? Okay, this would be the warp. Okay. And then the weft is the green. So let me fray a little bit here. And there's just like magic when they come together. Here. Let me get this out of here. Okay, so see, you can see this way it's green and this way it um, is, is yellow gold. And what happens is like, especially in these oak shots, oh look, it's kind of even picking it up. You get a sheen to it. It is 100% cotton, but in a sense, it kind of reads a little bit like silk. Yes, they're expensive, but I will tell you, they're absolutely glorious. And again, we do sell these in the store and it looks as if our BOM might have some something in it. So that's a little tip. And then the other sweet thing, Ginger, I had, I, this just made me so, it made me smile. She says, she's pretty new to this. And, and what do you do when you don't have a stash? Well, it's tough with COVID, but in the olden days, I would recognize what I was, uh, you know, little on and I would just go to quilt shops and spend money on fabric. So I have quite the stash. Now I will say fabric has gotten a lot more expensive. So it's, um, 
you know, not as easy to just go and say, oh, I want you, 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 you. But that is what is so beautiful about, I will say, what we're doing and other stores do with these BOMs. We're providing you with it so you don't have to freak out if you don't have the fabrics. That said, in faces, you're going to have to go dig through your stash or come up with something. But we'll get more to timing after that. I would like to take a look at some of the quilts you guys have sent in. I'm just... So, oh, I didn't make this one bigger. This is Lucille's, and it's her caves. This really, I, I went, oh, when I opened it up, because I love how she's gone out into the border. And remember, all these little design tricks go across the board, no matter what you're working on. And the other thing I would not have done, but I would now, having seen Lucille's, those stars are very, very prominent because um, she uses the same fabric for the four corners, the uh, half square triangles around the square blocks, and then the same fabric for the tips. That's fantastic. And I think it gives the uh, stars a little more boldness, okay? This is very unusual. Congratulations. You should be very happy, Lucille. Oh, I was going to say to do our teaching today, I'm going to show you how I sew a sleeve on and then how I approach this quilt, something like this that's super busy. I have two down and dirty tricks I'm going to tell you. It's, it's not rocket science, but I go to it every single time. And I might even have a third now. Okay, so let's thank you, Lucille. So then this is Bus Mamas. And I have, I can't, um, I left the words in this and I can't read it now because I had to turn it around. But what I love about this is she said in her words that this is her summer of COVID, which is sewing and also I guess hanging out in their RV. And if you go up to the top row far left, come down one and one over, she actually inserted a picture of their RV. So that is super clever. And it really does tell you about, you know, what we're going through or what she's going through right now. So now we're going to go to baskets. And this is uh, Vereen. Vereen. Okay. I can't tell if you used our kit or not. No, I think you did. But that twall on the outside, knock me out. That is fabulous. And then look at the way you guys, she did that inner border. And, and in a sense, that really gives a place to breathe. And I know a lot of you are having a difficult time with the busyness of all this. I mean, I love it, but I know a lot of you don't. I thought this was fascinating what she came up with. And, and I think it's a trick uh, you guys need to put in your hip pocket because I think that's really great. And then we have Lath Laho or Laugh Hofer. This was the first one I opened this morning and I actually gasped. Uh, this is fabulous. And remember how we were having problems setting things on point because the blocks are of different sizes, etc. Well, she took care of it. I'm a, I shouldn't just say she. I'm sorry, you guys. I'm just assuming. Um, I'm just assuming. So she took care of it by putting little sashings around the blocks in order to take care of business, all right? And I think that bird in that center um, basket is so charming. In fact, I'm just noticing it now. The simplicity of it is just perfect, perfect with the whole thing. And John is going to be leaving here now. Are you leaving, honey? He's going to be going up to Lafayette with Justin and we're picking up um, some office furniture and we get the keys to the warehouse at 1230 today. So we're very, very excited. The grandies were over last night and they were going out of their mind because there's a U-Haul in the front and <laughs> they just love that. Okay, so this is Loopy Quilter. And she, I believe, said she was having a little struggle with it, but she put the border on and that just made it. And her husband was happy with it too. Remember, you're the main one that has to be happy with it, but it's nice when you get affirmation from somebody else. Again, I don't usually put on solid, not solid, but fabric borders like that. But in this case, the whole thing becomes incredibly integrated. And it's probably because there are other prints in, in the... Um, quilt that help bridge it all together. So 
Congratulations. Don't you guys love looking at these? I mean, they're just fabulous. All right. Let's see. I, I even surprised myself. I do these an hour ago and I can't remember. Oh, oh, Suji. I want to come to your house and hug you right now. She's, I, I, I'm not laughing at you. I feel your pain. She wrote a whole thing. She's like, goes, oh my God, one disaster after another. Started quilting the baskets, got about a third done, and I ran out of bobbin. Okay, so we know how that goes. That's when the language of quilting comes in. So while winding a new one, I realized that I'd run out of the top thread after just a few more stitches. More on order now. Okay, we all get that. Then my machine started to make a trembling, grinding noise. It was in the shop in late July for cleaning and, and tuning up. Now I need to take it in again. Grrr, I hear you. This morning I heard from my body shop and my car won't be ready until next week. And now she needs to return, needs to return the rental and get a loaner um, that's bigger so she can go to the get voting equipment on Monday. She's an election judge. So Tuesday will be a nightmare working from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. And I hope to have this finished and ready for binding on Sunday. Okay, you guys, all light a candle for Suji, please. I just, I had to put that up because I wouldn't even be able to remember the story. We're with you. And hey, man, thank you for manning the polls. Appreciate it. It's going to be crazy. Okay, this is Ariel. And Ariel is getting started here. I, I want to say you've, you're throwing some prints in and that's fine. Make sure that they aren't, and I realize you're just, you put them down on a bedspread or whatever, but make sure that they're, your eyes traveling all over the surface and they're all just aren't on one side. And I think you'll need a, probably three more blocks with that in it. So you have the total of five. That would be my guess. Thank you for sharing. Okay, Karen. Karen was having a hard time with this. Um, I We showed it earlier. That was an, uh, an Edita uh, house block in the beginning. Um, I mean, she had that already. And I, I just, I love it. But the busyness was getting to her. I think that's what this is. Yeah, I, she disliked the quilt more and more with every block she added. Um, late last night, she added some fabric, not pieces, spacers. And that was the problem. It needed a place to breathe. I adore this quilt. And so just, you keep going on it. I mean, there's nothing like a one color quilt. And I just love that you've got those houses in there that are from Edita. Oh, my daughter's here now. Okay. Um, so here we got it right side up. Thank you. And I kind of figured out how to do these pictures so they're not on their side most of the time. Um, this is Kim's. Hey, Kim, I'm hoping you haven't sewn this together because there's one thing here that I'm having a little issue with. And it's your quilt. You can do whatever you want. But on the right-hand side, third block down, that's tipped upside down. Now I realize you have some other ones that are tipped upside down, but they're much smaller. Come on in, Adair. Here comes my daughter. Let's see. <laughs> what are you doing? Jocking off your cheese. Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Did they have a, did, did the kids go all dressed up in school today? Did they have the parade or uh-uh? Oh, no. Oh, yeah, I didn't think so. Yeah. Yeah, the kids are in this little daycare and they're being so careful. Thank you for that. And your kids have stuff on the front bench. Bye, sweetheart. Bye. Justin wanted to know if it's always this crazy here. At our house? At this house when the Before. kids are when the kids are here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. So here is PJD. I'm having a really hard time with this because the picture is so small. I'm wondering if you could try and upload another one, but what I noticed in this picture, she was wondering about inner border borders, and I didn't notice this until I looked really hard at it, that some of the blocks you have floating with spacers that are neutral, and you might try doing that all the way around the edge before considering your your border. So I'm sorry that I can't help you more, but the picture is so, so small. Oh, okay, and I think you said something about that pink one on the right side down, three down. 
it's very lost okay and that's because of value you have two choices you can get rid of it and put it on the back or you can do a couple more smaller ones that have very subtle um, value change that's what I would do if it were mine and you're right to be questioning it okay this is Paola's she did I think she said some um, embroidery on her machine or um, stitching and stuff like that in the baskets and she's probably going to add more after it's quilted but I think this is lovely and you know the more I'm seeing the spacers in there I think the more I'm really liking that to, just to calm it down if it's too much for you so uh, great idea to add that in the baskets they look the big ones they look fabulous and you've nailed the border good job and then we have oh this um let me see um I've been saving I've been sewing baskets almost in my sleep this is Jan's um trying to catch up and now I have them all done they need to be joined together and some applique done then I will have to start thinking about the border loving these classes thank you um and who would have thought who would have thunk I would have loved making all these half square triangles well I got news for you the holiday quilt's gonna have them too but I'm gonna have a cheater way to do it and I think I promised I'd show you that Wednesday okay just smack me over with that border smack me over and again looking at the earlier border that really got got my my juices going um I, there's kind of a white spacer around there so it's interesting how instinctually we um just do these things so thank you Patsy for sharing that so with that I'm going to show you this picture and then tell you the end of the story with this yes there is a story all right so let's talk about quilting first and again this is a very very um just four slides I'm going to show you just four slides so I want to go to my computer screen and then I want to go over to my PowerPoint this quilt is very 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 busy uh, a lot of my quilts are lately so the problem is is that you will um, end up with stuff that's not going to show if you do fancy quilting so I do one of two things one is I just choose an all-over grid like you can see right here and an all-over grid does not necessarily have to be boring okay it could be a triple grid although I will tell you that will take you three times to quilt it <laughs> you a triple grid but man it would be stunning and of course this is whether you're on a domestic on a sit down on a long arm or hand or you know how I love my double my diagonal grids and this one I have left space in between I haven't done um, equal amount of quilting like I am really into right now and then even something like this you just need something to hold it all down I'm not much for quarter inch seam quilting in this because the sizes and shapes are so random and you can even think about um, incorporating two grids but just keep it simple on that note this is a trick that I've done a hundred million years and it's an overall soft wavy design and let me show it to you here up close okay I'm praying that the next image shows you how to do it this is actually easier to do a machine and hand quilting than a straight grid if you want to get right down to it so what you're going to do for this is you will draw on your um, quilt these open open soft lines think of something very very organic okay and then you're going to echo quilt it again machine hand doesn't matter one of my rules and I did a whole thing on quilting you guys for these uh, lies if you want to go back and look is if I'm doing soft and curvy I want something geometric on the outside edge so those are my two go-to's on um, there we go oh, how do I get to here those are my two go-to's 
and let me talk a little bit more about the quarter inch stuff. But then a lot of it's that's how we learned, right? Because the teacher just wants you to get going. But if I do quarter inch right here, and I do quarter inch here, this is going to be much more open than this. And what you're going to lose there is you're going to lose um, equal amount of quilting over the whole surface. And one last way now, and I've learned this from Diane Schweikert, who does some of my machine quilting for me, this goes in the second category of soft curvy lines. And I've shown this before. This was our Sequoia sampler. I love this. And I'm thinking I, I'm going to have, I'm probably going to have her quilt this one. And I'm probably going to have her do my baskets like this. But if I have a soft and curvy on the inside, I'll probably want something geometric out here. At a minimum, I'll want, maybe, I don't know. I don't know what. I got to talk to her. She's a master. I, I kind of hate to tell her what to do. So um, that's my 10 cents on quilting a busy quilt. I, I hope you weren't planning a monumental, <laughs> life-changing thing here because it's just not there. All right. So I want to talk about putting on a sleeve. And why do you put a sleeve on? You put a sleeve on the top of your quilt so that you can hang it. And I often hang my quilts with uh, curtain rod things. Oh, I want to say one other thing, you guys. Um, John is gone right now, and he's the one that brings me questions. So please don't ask me any questions right now. When we get to the end, start firing the questions at me. And if you've already put a question up, please put it up again, because I'm not paying attention to that down there, okay? So here is a, oh no, I gotta, I gotta show you this sleeve. Um, <laughs> what are you doing? I got up my face's quilt. And I go, ouch, here's my face's quilt. Ow, and I stuck myself with a pin. <laughs> this is a poor man's sleeve. <laughs> So this was, I'm sure, for a Ricky Tim Super Seminar. We were hanging them, and I didn't have a sleeve on it. I always try and put a sleeve on, always, and I hadn't. So um, we just pinned things. And see, here's the idea, is that then you can put a rod through it, all right? So um, this is my poor man's sleeve. I don't recommend you do it. Or if you have to do this because you're in a hurry, you, at least use safety pins, okay? So how I do a sleeve is this. First of all, oh wait, oh, oh I didn't mean to do that. Whoops. Um, camera. The first thing I'll do is I will, and I, I was gl actually glad that I hadn't um, bound, finished this, okay, because I could show you. This is the Sequoia Sampler, if you're new to the game. This is the thing that started this whole sew-in. And I've got my binding sewn on, all right? And so what I'm going to do, and I use a quarter inch, so I want you just to see that I've got my binding sewn on. I'm ready to whip it over and, and then whip it on by hand, all right? But let's go back to the document camera. This is the top, and here's what I do. And I'm gonna tell you, this uh, is a, um, a no-nonsense sleeve. There's much fancier sleeves you can do, but this is like a no-nonsense, get it done. So what I'll do is I could use the same fabric for my sleeve, so it completely blends in, but I like to use an opposing fabric so that I, if like I'm doing a trunk show, I can easily see where the top of the quilt is. So what I'll do is I will cut a strip of fabric. I think I cut this one nine inches the exact width of the quilt, all right? Then what I did was I folded it and I folded it and I stitched it so that I did not have raw edges. And then that just brings it in enough. So you can see right here, I'll bring it in. Then what you're going to do is you're gonna press it, all right? And you can see here that that's all finished. Uh, I also have used a pinking shears if I didn't even wanna bother with that. Again, I don't put my quilts in competition, and I, I can't stress that enough. So then you can see here, well, maybe get down more. Um, clear in. You can see where I've sewn the binding on, right? 
This sleeve is going to go on the back. I'm going to take it right up to the um, right up to the top here, and you can see I've got room here because I I don't want to when I bring this over, I don't want to bump it into the sleeve, right? So it's got to be less than what the width of the quilt is, and then I'm going to stitch it less than a quarter inch because that's what this the um, binding has been sewn on with. So I'm going to sew it on like an eighth of an inch across, and I'm not going to waste your time and do it here because I think you know what that means. And then when I go and bind it, let me take this up a little bit. Okay, when I take to bind this, I can just bring the binding over it and then just pretend like that's the back. Now, another thing that I learned way early on, if you know that this is a quilt that is going to be in competition, you might want to double the sleeve for double protection for the back of your quilt. Then the other, so now, so now rather than nine inches, I'd be cutting it eight, 18, yeah, and then folding it, I guess, twice or whatever. I don't know, but anyways, you want, you'd want basically four layers. And then the other thing you can do, whether you're doing a double sleeve or a single sleeve, is a lot of people, once it's all done, will sew this down by hand so that if a rod is coming in, there's no chance of it going underneath and ripping the back of your quilt, okay? So then the, then I hate putting sleeves on. I hate, I hate it almost more than sewing bindings on. And the reason is, is I have to squinch my hand like this to get to it. And so I came up with this last time with the quilt I just did. Oh, and then if you have pins in there to hold it down, then of course you're gonna stab yourself. I mean, it's just meant to be that way. I will take my glue, my water soluble quilter select glue stick and just glue it down like that. And then that holds it in place. Oh, look at, yikes. Uh, I hold it in place while I stitch it down. So that that is uh, my 10 cents on on the sleeves. So also, if I don't say this, Margo's gonna drive to my house and shoot me. Sign your quilt. Make a some sort of documentation on the back. Uh, I would put your name, where you live, the year, if somebody else has quilted it, um, maybe the class, but it's something so that a hundred years from now, when we're not around, somebody will know. And I will tell you right now, um, this whole COVID thing is amazing. If it's a gift, tell them who, you know, just get the information on it. Do I do that? No. And it's very, very naughty of me. And I know that. So at a minimum, what I will do is just take a felt tip pin and sign my name on the back and date it, all right? Like a Sharpie, a water soluble one. So if I didn't say that, Margo would not be happy because she really does her labels and she really does them well. Okay, so let me tell you some exciting news, all right? So yesterday, good morning people, yesterday um, I kidnapped my girlfriend and so that's why I put this picture up. Here we go. Where, where are we? There. This is where when we were swimming on their boat, okay? So I kidnapped Robin Maimoni. And I said, Robin, I said, I'm going to come kidnap you. And so just get decent, okay? I didn't, I didn't even say that because who cares what she looks like? And so, because obvious, look at us there. And so I got her and... Um, we started driving and I said, I got to go north on this freeway. I've got to go west on 24. And all of a sudden she goes to me, she goes, are we going to Freddie's house? I said, yes, we're going to Freddie's house. Now, if you haven't watched the show with a Sujata Shaw and Freddie Moran, you you've missing the boat. It is that show alone is worth your 1995 for six months. So the first thing when you go into Freddie's 90, okay, um, Freddie, this is when you walk into the front of her house and this is as quiet as it gets. All right. And here is my dear friend, Freddie standing next to her self portrait. There's a reason I went to her house, but I'll tell you that in a moment. So right now, um, she is all into faces and you'll learn in the 
field piece that that she was in a well she almost died okay she wanted to die and then she came out of it and she started doing faces there's faces everywhere now mine okay let me keep going everywhere even and i'm i'm sorry freddie that your bed wasn't made but there's even faces in her bedroom okay and somebody said to freddie well how can you sleep at night and she said well i close my eyes and i don't see all those faces guys there are faces everywhere freddie is selling her faces and so she had called me yesterday morning and um, she she makes the top, it's all raw edge, and Jean Impey does the quilting on them, and they are spectacular. And she, she, she needs to get rid of them. So um, we said, okay, we have an idea. I, I, that's why I kidnapped Robin, so she could see Freddie's house. And uh, we went up and I got the 12 quilts. And next Wednesday, I'm gonna be sharing those quilts with you. And guess what? They're for sale. And she priced them. Um, they We only have 12. They will be in the store uh, by Wednesday. And we'll go through and look at those faces and discuss what Freddie has what Freddie has done. And this is such a marvelous kickoff to the whole thing that we're doing. So then on Friday, you will get your first face lesson and we will go from there. What you need for that, for the class, is you're gonna need to go to your stash and I'll give you direction on Friday, so don't worry about it. And you're gonna need some sort of fusible um, webbing. Uh, you could just glue stick it, but I'm actually going to teach you blanket stitching. My, when I went, when John told me that I needed to do faces, and the reason is, is that he wanted you guys to have avatars that are your faces. And that's the little picture that's by your head when you make a comment on the forum or whatever. And um, so I, I called Freddie because the uh, last thing I'm going to do is steal somebody's class. That's just not going to happen. And I said, I'm going to do faces. It's not going to be like yours. I'm going to handle it completely differently. And she thought that was marvelous. And I think that's how it all got into her head that maybe, you know, we could work together or whatever and get, get some of her work into your hands. And so anyways, I'm super excited. Okay. This is what's going on right now. As I mentioned, John is going with Justin up to Lafayette to get some furniture. We get the keys at 1230. Um, the movers come on Monday and then Tuesday I'm doing a class for a group, a lecture and a class for Tennessee, a guild in Tennessee. And then Wednesday I'll be back celebrating with Freddie's, Freddie's wonderful faces. I also promised you, I would share with you what our holiday project is going to be. Okay. So I want you to all have a wonderful day. And, and hang, hang, hang in there. Where, where, where did you go? Where did you go? Suji, hang, hang in there. We love you. This is, thank you for posting that because while it's your horror, I just went, oh, baby, we're with you. Oh, I didn't even comment on your border. I love it. And I would probably bind it in red too. And also thank you for doing the polls because that, I mean, one thing about being, in the United States of America or wherever you have the freedom to vote, that is a privilege and it doesn't just happen by magic, right? So um, have a good one, have a safe Halloween. How I'm gonna handle it is I took all the cute little kids next door presents and put it on their front porch and then I'm gonna put little piles of goodies on my front porch. Um, not a whole lot. I, I'll be shocked if we have more than 10 trick-or-treaters coming because it's looking very, very different these days. So we're in our new normal, guys, and I am having a ball with you. Okay, questions. Margo, you got it. I told you I would take questions. Uh, movers coming. We're, we're moving our warehouse from Alden Lane, which breaks our heart, but um, you couldn't swing a cat in that without hitting a... Um, a box. So that's why Justin's here. Happy to see you live when not working. Thanks for doing these presentations. Yes, it's my absolute honor and pleasure to be in your homes. Okay, do we have anything else? Uh, how about, uh oh, I just did something dumb. Hold on, I lost you. 
how do I post pictures of my baskets? Barbara Black has a, I don't want to do that. I'm sorry if you're seeing this install thing. I don't know what's going on. John's not here to bail me out. Um, can you see early Freddie's faces? Nope, Patty, sorry. I don't even have them right now. They're being photographed. Um, you go to the forum, go to recent topics, look up baskets, and or search Barbara Black, and she shows you how to upload um, things on the forum. Where were the two shows we should watch before the faces class? The what are they? Thank you. One is the Sujata Shaw and Freddie's class. Um, you just Google them in the search. And then the other is Alethea's, Alethea Ballard's. And mine are like neither of those, but it'll get your head going in that direction. So yes, Jane, we are having an adventure, aren't we? Can you, okay, sorry that that stupid thing is right up here. I'm sure you can see it. If not, get out of here. Um, so, okay, yay. Stay safe. Get on your costume or whatever. Put the trick-or-treats out by uh, the front door. And uh, you guys have a lovely weekend. And I'll see you next Wednesday. I, you will be on top of mind. Trust me. Have a good one. Bye-bye.